welcome to episode one of my new beat making series called Better Beats 101. It's going to be a weekly series. I'm going to have a new video up every week, and that's what weekly means. Uh, <laughs> Better Beats 101. And it's basically just going to be tips and tricks, things that I've learned over the years of me making beats and things that have helped me improve. And I'm just going to be sharing that with you guys. And hopefully you guys can uh, learn something from it. And uh, let's just get into it. All right, so my first tip might sound kind of obvious, but it is overlooked. And it's definitely something I overlooked for a while. And that is using chords and chord progressions to start your beat. And the reason why is every beat that you make is going to have a chord progression in it, whether you like it or not. That's just the way music works. So if you're intentional about it and you lay the chords down at the beginning, it gives you that control over the beat rather than if you don't necessarily know music theory, kind of just laying down a melody and then the chord progression is happening, but it's not really something you're aware of and it, it makes it harder to make the beat. But uh, there's a couple different chords that you can do. The main way that you lay down a chord is you just place a root note and then you'll skip one note in the scale and place another note after that. So you see all these highlighted notes are in the scale of A major right now. So if we place a note, skip a note in the scale, place another one, skip a note in the scale, place another one, we now have a chord. And then you can do variations of that chord by just adding another note on top of that. So let's say we put this one right here. This is going to be a chord. And then we can just play with the octaves of these exact notes. And make that chord sound a little bit more spaced out. And after we do that, we can animate this chord in a bunch of different ways. So here's a couple of different ways that you can do your chords. Do it like this, which is kind of like a strum. You could do it like this. You could do it like this. You could do it like this. There's a bunch of different ways that you can arrange these chords and that in and of itself kind of makes a melody. And then you just place another chord after that and then you can animate another chord and then you now have a chord progression for your entire four bar loop, your eight bar loop, and you can add a top melody on top of that. So the second tip is going to be the space between the notes is just as important as the notes themselves. And this is also a mistake that I made for a long time was just putting way too much in the beat. So let me lay down a chord progression real quick, and then we will add a top melody on that and I'll kind of elaborate upon that. All right, so I've got a chord progression over here and I've just, as you can see, dragged a couple notes in the chords out a little bit to kind of animate it. And this is what this sounds like. I'm just going to add a top melody on this and I'm kind of elaborate on what I was saying about the space between the notes is just as important as the notes themselves. See, so right here, adding a note right here, it could fit. But you also have to think about if we take this note out. And we can use that same note later on. It can be really helpful to just lay out your melody and you can just drag it out and space it out a lot, a lot more spaced out than you think it can be. So you want to leave a lot of space between these notes and have it kind of build up and have points where the melody has something happen at each time your chord changes. And so it doesn't have to necessarily be every time, but every time it does happen, you want to have it kind of line up with one of those chords. Tip number three is have a reason for every sound that you have in your beat. This is definitely a mistake that I have made before. Just adding more and adding more because you feel like the beat isn't done. And a lot of the times adding more isn't always the solution. It's changing something or even taking something away. The fourth tip is watch clashing what I mean by that is if I send this melody that we made over here to a mixer track and put an EQ on it, if we play it, 
this is the frequency range that this is taking up. If I adjust this on the EQ, I can take out lower frequencies or higher frequencies. So if we take out some lows, this is what it would sound like. If we take out some highs, this is what it would sound like. And so this is important because when we start adding other sounds into the beat, if we have one sound that's taking up this higher end frequency, we don't want to have other sounds EQ'd to have only those higher frequencies playing. We actually want to have it be the other way around. But let's say we have two instruments in here. One of them is using these higher frequencies, and one of them is using the lower frequencies. We want to have the one that is using the higher frequencies EQ'd for the higher frequencies. We want to have the one that's using the lower frequencies EQ'd for the lower frequencies. That also helps you with not adding too many sounds, because if you start adding too many sounds in a beat, then the frequencies can really start to clash. And if they do start to clash, it makes it really hard for an artist to have any room to do anything on your beat. So definitely pay attention to that. Tip number five is to keep it as simple as possible without being boring. You want to use as little as you have to with still getting the job done. You want to make everything be as simple and as catchy as possible, but still sounding full and complete and not like limiting yourself. All right, so I'm just going to finish this beat real quick, and I'm going to kind of walk through those five steps and reference that as I'm finishing this beat. So I'm going to add another layer right now. I'm going to do a pad on here. And so I want to find a kind of deeper sounding pad because this piano that I have is more high pitched. That plays into not having clashing frequencies. Me getting a lower pad is going to make it easier to have it not clash with the piano. This is going to play into not having clashing frequencies, but this sound is going to be a higher sound as well. We just need to make sure it's something that is spacious and gives the piano room to work because it's going to be in that same frequency range. So I'm finding a more ambient kind of bell sound here. So I'm going to send all these mixer tracks. Just going to EQ the piano a little bit. Add a delay on here. I'm going to add some reverb on this pad. I'm also going to put wire on this and just really make this be a spacious pad. I'm going to lower the BPM of this a little bit. So you can see on this piano here, I trimmed all the frequencies above 5,000 hertz. So on this, I'm going to boost these above 5,000 hertz frequencies. And then I'm going to put a delay on this. I'm going to throw some reverb on this, and I might actually try half time. I like that. comment of what kind of videos you want to see me do in the future make sure to check those links in the description i got my instagram go drop a follow down there and i'll see you guys in the next video peace